Oh, yeah. Hey, Peter. Hey, Peter. Hi, Deidre. Hey, Peter. All right. How Here are we you? go. Good. How are you doing? Okay. Hey, Jan. Hey, Pam. Jan, oh my gosh, I haven't seen you in so long. I know. How are you? I am great. Thank you so much for being here. All right, let me pull up my notes. I was busily running and letting people know that we were starting. So let me go ahead and pull up. My notes. Oh, I'm going to have to mute my microphone go because my right dog then. is being naughty. Sorry. Nope, that is perfectly all right. All right. Okay. I want to value your time. So I'm going to go ahead and get started because we are at two o'clock. Um, let's see. So welcome to the teleprompter toolkit, which is uh, all about unleashing your badass. Uh, and when I talk about that, it's about getting in touch with your inner voice and who you really are and letting that out, uh, getting video savvy and making more sales. So I'm a, um, visibility strategist and coach. And I've structured this workshop to, uh, over these three days, to be able to deliver high value content to you. And the highest value content that I can give you is if you participate. So if you're, if you have any questions at all, whatever questions, comments that you have that allow me to help you, uh, to help you to overcome whatever is going on in your life with your visibility, please put um, your questions, comments, thoughts, concerns in the chat. And as we're going along, if it makes sense, then I'll answer those questions um, as we go along in the workshop. Because again, this is what I want this to be is uh, a give and take so that you get your questions answered. It's not just me doing a master class and saying, here, boom, go do it. Um, I want you to be able to participate in this with me as if we were in a real live workshop. So we're going to start um, right away with the people that are here. I'm just going to take a quick moment for each of you to be able to say um, who you are and uh, what is your experience with visibility or what is what is kind of keeping you blocked that you think is keeping you blocked um, and where you're from. So maybe it's your name, where you're from. And what is keeping you stuck in your business? So, um, Peter, you want to go ahead and start? No. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jan, Jan, you want to go? <laughs> no, I would. I'm only you... kidding. You. I'm oh, only okay. kidding. I'm Peter Cotton uh, from Boston. Uh, what's keeping me blocked is my appearance. So you're concerned about your appearance worried about it think not worried pay attention i just it's not pleasant to me to see <laughs> it's not, okay. i don't like looking at it myself well just so that you know you're not alone uh most people don't like the way they look on video and most people don't like the way they sound they actually hate the way they sound uh, so you're not alone in that but we are going to address that anybody else want to go pam jan I'll jump in. We have a visitor in the background. Oh, look. <laughs> That's Dooley. Dooley. Um, um, my name is Jan Delory, and um, I'm originally from Boston and now live in North Carolina. Been here for about 17 years. And I don't really have a problem with, um, I, I think my biggest issues right now is working out all the tech. So if I showed you my workspace right now, you would see that I'm setting up lighting, I'm playing with cameras, I'm playing with so many different things all at once. And so um, my workspace is in my kitchen because my company is meal prep made. So um, trying to make your kitchen look like a studio is much more difficult than you think. So um, it's challenging and um, I'm working through it, but I get frustrated. So I'll leave it at that. I think that's my biggest issue. Okay, so we've got appearance, um, the tech, and how it looks. And what about you, Pam? Hello, everyone. So I'm Pam Lamenti from Orlando, Florida. 
welcome. So, thank you. So when it comes to video, I think just being prepared to show up, you know, having the right content and having content all the time, that that is what holds me back. So coming up with the right content. Yes. On the regular. Okay, we have got one more person. Here we go, admit. Okay, and here goes Wendy. Um, so we've got, so far we have appearance. Hey, Wendy, appearance, which certainly holds a lot of people back, tech and how it looks, preparation and content having content on the regular. Um, Wendy, we're talking about just introducing ourselves, who we are, where we're, where we live, and what is it that is holding you back in any of your visibility? Got it, Wendy? Can you hear me? I don't, I don't think, think Wendy. I don't think Wendy can hear me. So we're just going to um, we're going to skip Wendy for the moment. Um, okay. So all of these things are definitely going to be addressed in here. And let me go ahead and let Wendy know. Wendy, can you hear it yet? Can yeah, you hear I can. Okay, awesome. Um, we're just sharing our names. Everybody's introduced themselves and where you are um calling from as well as um what is holding you back or what are your insecurities about visibility got it is it my turn it is your turn <laughs> <laughs> hi everybody my name is wendy barr and um yeah so i'm a business growth strategist and um i work closely with um, coaches, authors, speakers, trainers to help them build. Um... We'll, we'll introduce um, what, what you're doing later. Uh, for right oh, now, okay. it's, just, it's just your name. That's okay. It's just your name, where you're from, where you are oh, calling in from, got it. and then any visibility hangups that you may have. Got it. So I'm Wendy Barr. I'm in Orange County, California. And I think my biggest hangup is that I'm going to say the wrong thing. So I always tend to want to read a script just so that I get it all right and perfect. Okay. And we've got admit all, we have more people coming in. Okay. So, so far we have appearance tech and how it looks preparation content on the regular saying the right things. Um, not wanting to say the wrong things and let's see who else do we have here? Jody, welcome. So happy to Hi. see you here. Hi, everybody. Um, so we're just getting to know each other. We have Peter Cotton, Jan Delory, Wendy Barr, and uh, Pam Manthe. Um, Jody, you'll go ahead and introduce yourself, who you are. And those of you who have already introduced yourself, go ahead and put your name, who you are, um, where you're calling from, and your business in the chat so we can so everybody can download the chat afterwards. And we can all share information with each other. I think that's one of the wonderful things about a workshop is that when you're in an actual workshop, not virtual, when you're in an actual workshop, you do get to network with each of the individuals. So this is one of the ways that you can let everybody know who you are. And if something, if at some point along the line, you look at somebody's information, you're like, oh, you know what? I need to connect with that person. Just like you would in real life, do it here too. Get their information and connect outside of here. Um, let's see, we've got Jody Hinkle. Jody, tell us uh, who you, well, obviously you're Jody Hinkle, but um, <laughs> where you are calling in from and what is your biggest block with visibility or what keeps you stuck from being more visible? Sure, sure. So um, I'm calling in from New Smyrna Beach, Florida. I uh, relocated here about five years ago from Massachusetts after a long corporate career in healthcare. And her quest is my company. I uh, work with you can you can share that in the chat. It's just your name. Okay. Okay. And then um any kind of visibility uh, issues issues yeah. that you have and where yeah. you're calling from. Um so I would like to refine my ability to capture my audience's attention in less than five seconds. Ah. 
That's good. Great. Okay. And we have uh, Jenny. You want to go ahead and share, Jenny? Jenny, we can't hear you, so we're going to come back to you. Hey, Kate, are you available? And Kate's unavailable. Okay, so for everybody else, go ahead and uh, let me go ahead and let. Hi, I I I am here. Um, oh, I'm wonderful! Not visible yet, which is very odd in a class about visibility, and, and <laughs> very odd. But but I will be visible soon. I I okay. yes, I'm actually changing my clothes, and that is a really good reason not to be visible on Zoom. We we it's appreciate really that. We really appreciate I know, I know. that. This is not burlesque, <laughs> so this is good. Um, but Kate, if you go uh, ahead and introduce yourself. Um, just your name, where you're calling in from, and what visibility issues you may have. Well, besides the clothing issue, um, uh, I'm Kate Phillips. I am zooming in from central Washington, uh, where it is really strangely cold in June. And visibility issues. You know, I have overcome a lot of visibility issues. Yeah, I know you um, have. So, like I, I, you know, I still have things go through my head about either being judged or making mistakes. And because both of those things happen all the time and and neither of them have ever killed me, I, I like I, I'm just sort of unstoppable now with being visible. Yeah. <laughs> well, awesome. except for right now, but. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. OK, I think we have one more Jacqueline. I think you. And Jenny are the last ones, but Jacqueline, uh, your name, where you're calling from, and uh, what difficulty do you have with visibility? Well, hello, hello, and thank you so much for doing this. I'm Jacqueline Gertz. I'm calling in from Florida. We're in, uh, we just got done with a big thunderstorm here, so hopefully the internet will uh, will hold out. <laughs> um what I find is typically I don't have any problem getting on camera. I'm, I'm usually, you know, speaker ready. I've had the training. I, I, I know all of that. But what I have found recently is because I have a new program and um, you, you know, I'm kind of pivoting in my business. So now it's like, duh, duh, what do I say? Duh. So for me, it's about the messaging. What what do I say? Awesome. Uh, thank you. And Jenny, are you available to talk yet? Okay, we cannot hear you, Jenny. So we're gonna go. We're gonna go ahead. Again, each one of you, if you want to put your information into the chat, please do. You are more than welcome to and connect at any time, either during or after the workshop. Okay, so let me go ahead and How get about me. Who 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 are we missing? Nancy. Nancy, I'm so sorry. I skipped right over you. If I didn't know you, I would say that you didn't love me and you were ignoring me, but I know oh, that that's not no, true. That's definitely not true. So Nancy, where are you calling in from and what um, visibility issues do you have or major visibility issue do you have or concern? I am from New York, but I live in Florida and I do make that distinction. <laughs> and... For me, similar to some of what the others said, it's knowing what to say and because that has often stopped me with, uh, I know I need to do a video, but I don't know what to, what to talk about or what to say and then being judged and looking stupid. And I know nobody else can relate to that. <laughs> yeah. All very, all very normal things. Absolutely. Um, so again, just for those of you that got here a little bit later, if you have any questions, concerns along the way, or I start talking about something, you're like, no, I really have a question about that. Please either raise your hand or put the question into the chat because this is a workshop. I mean to be able to answer the questions for you. So anything that comes up, you want me to reiterate something, please just put it into the chat or raise your hand and I will get to you. I do have a guide slide that I'm following in order to make sure that I'm delivering the content to you. Um, but again, I want to make sure that we use this for you and your time and the needs that you have. And uh, the more you ask questions, the more you have any anything that you want to talk about or reiterate, 
it makes it easy for somebody else because somebody else may have the same question you do, but they just don't have the bravery to say it. Or you ask a question, they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize I had that question. So please feel free to ask. Um, so everything that I teach, whether it's in my weekly video content, the Get Visible Mastermind or Unmasked, which is my private coaching program, everything is systemized and categorized under the words of my tagline. And my tagline is be bold, be you, be known. And each day of this workshop is going to focus on one aspect of that because everything that I do is based on that. From the beginning, since 2008, everything has been about being bold and being uniquely you. The reason I got started with that in the beginning, and it's even more important now, was back when Gary Vaynerchuk first got started in 2008. And I watched one of his videos and I thought, oh my gosh, video is where it's at. <laughs> it was where everything's going to go. And the person I was working with at the time thought I was crazy, said YouTube's a fad. <laughs> yeah, so that was 2008. I uh, started my business right in the middle of the last kind of economic downturn um, and did great because it, it's not a matter of what's going on out there. It's a matter of can you help people? Can you make a difference in their lives? Do you have a solution that changes their business or their personal life? So each day of this workshop is going to be dedicated to a different aspect of that tagline uh, again and it's all focused on this teleprompter portion uh, let's see according now that this is a really interesting statistic and i thought that this was this was uh very cool now peter you aren't a part of this but that's okay because you're awesome <laughs> this this statistic is about women but I, I wanted to make sure i mention you because i'm not leaving i'm not completely leaving you out peter you are you are awesome and fit in very well with everyone. Um, according to Forbes magazine, women drive a majority of consumer spending accounting for over 80% of purchases and over 90% of new home purchases are driven by women. Now, if you uh, doubt the statistic, has anybody ever seen House Hunters? No? Right. All you have to do is watch an episode or two of House Hunters and you'll know that it's almost always the woman that's making the decision. The guy will come in and say, I want this, 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 this. And the girl goes, no, I'm not walking upstairs to do my laundry. <laughs> and the decision comes down to the woman. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up, since most of the people in here are women, I'm, I'm bringing this up for a reason. You are way more powerful than you think. And we have been led to believe, and I'm including myself in that. That's why I said we, I'm including myself in that. We've all been led to believe that there are things about us that aren't powerful, that we need other things in our life, that we need other, um, that we need direction from other people. When actually it's the day-to-day -day activity sometimes and, the, and just the minutia of what happens in your business that keeps you from actually knowing what to do and understanding how powerful you truly are. And I know because I've been through this. I, I told you I'm a visibility strategist and I've been creating marketing videos for over 15 years from clients. And this is just for a few, I know there's a few in here that don't know me. For others of you, this is kind of a repeat, but for those of you that don't know me, uh, I've been creating business marketing videos for over 15 years and uh, with clients ranging from insurance companies, marketing agencies, entrepreneurs, and my mom. And uh, my mom, I took her company from a $250,000 a year company and she'd been stuck there for a few years. And we went to a million in just uh, under two years. And all of that was using marketing uh visibility sorry video <laughs> marketing strategies okay and in 2000 i told you i started in 2008 and i started doing videos i was doing videos every single week and i had built up this 
huge network of people. Um, my, I had uh, newsletters going out to 48 states, five different countries. I mean, it was crazy. I was a badass. <laughs> it was just insane. I was up there with like Mari Smith and I uh, can't think of other names at the moment, but it was going crazy. And then what happened? It was all in my head. Not all of it, but a really good part of it was in my head. So here's something that I know all too well, and it sounds like some of you have gone through some of this, just hearing some of your responses. Growing a business requires you to grow. <laughs> so you can't just grow a business and then not grow yourself. And when you dedicate yourself to true growth, right, you find that there are things that you don't tolerate anymore. In your life, there are things that don't you don't tolerate in your business. Has this ever happened to you? I, I would love for you to share if this has happened to you. Has this happened to you where you've been growing in your business and you find that you're just not able to tolerate things that you used to tolerate anymore? And then you can find that you discover truths about yourself and you lose people along the way. And this is what happened to me. And I think this is also one of the things that is the scariest for those of us that have a difficult time going live or worry about saying the right thing or saying the wrong thing because we're worried about losing people. And some of it was said, you know, I don't want to say the wrong thing. I want to make sure that, uh, let's see what else was, was on here. I wrote it up at the top right your appearance worried about appearance whether it's age or size um nobody mentioned this but a lot of times people talk about voice like i just can't stand the way i sound but that whole concern about saying the right thing and upsetting people and um jenny i think i'm gonna mute you because i think that's where the sound is coming from there we go um, and being out of alignment with your audience. That's another concern sometimes, but because they'll hear this a lot. I just, I just want to say the right thing. I don't want to upset so-and-so, or what if I say this and I lose people? If I'm myself, I'm not going to X, Y, Z. If I say what I'm really thinking, this will happen. And it's all negative. <laughs> so I can't really truly be myself. And yet, if being out of alignment in order to meet your audience where they're at, are you even, do you even have the right audience? We twist ourselves. We twist ourselves in all sorts of manipulations. And here's a place where a lot of marketing coaches and myself kind of diverge. Uh, we kind of part ways here because I'm not the coach that's going to help you bend and morph your message to get a bazillion followers. <laughs> I don't think you need a bazillion followers, uh, first of all, to do well in your business. You don't need a bazillion followers. Um, and you also don't need to discover and cater to 15 different personalities in your audience. <laughs> You, you just don't. Um, Walmart does that. Unless you're the Walmart of your business, <laughs> Walmart appeals to a lot of different people. There's also a whole section of people they don't appeal to, but there's a whole section of people they do. And they serve so many different light areas, right? They've got, um, oh my gosh, we've got food. We've got sports attire. <laughs> Go out and get tennis, whatever. But if it's you and it's yourself, you can just be you and do well. We're going to talk about this, right? It doesn't have to be hard. It's about focusing on who you are. And I can demonstrate the importance of this, right? Because if, um, if you're doubting me, any doubters out there about being yourself? Um. I'm going to see if I can get this to work. I did try it before I got on here, so hopefully it does. Um, we're going to look at, let me see if I can get this up here. 
There we go. And you, I think you'll know all of these people, but we're going to start with this one. Let me share my screen. Share screen. Okay. Nope. Don't send. I think you have to actually click the screen you want to share. Don't send. Stop share. Hold on. Okay, obviously that didn't happen, so I'm just going to say their names. <laughs> because <laughs> so, that is obviously not working today okay so everybody know who's knows who christopher walken is okay how about um and we're all right we're all familiar with christopher walken i mean if if you met christopher walken before he became an actor would you think that this man would be an actor he can't even finish a sentence without a bunch of pauses and this is a famous actor, millionaire. Anybody here familiar with Suzanne Evans? Suzanne Evans. For those of you that aren't familiar with Suzanne Evans, um, Suzanne is a, a very, um, very, very successful coach. She's also incredibly abrasive. Um, I, I think she's awesome, but there are people that definitely have an issue with her because she is so abrasive. And can be can come across very very pushy and sh and there are some people who say oh my gosh i could never be on video because i'm too large suzanne evans was probably well over 300 pounds in her heyday um she's lost a lot of weight and she's doing quite well now but it's not an excuse another person uh fran drescher the nanny if you had met her before she became famous actress on The Nanny, would anybody have thought, now, there's an actress. <laughs> there's somebody I'm going to put my money on being a famous actress right there, The Nanny. Yeah. She was just on something recently, actually. One more. I, I, most of you are probably familiar with Eckhart Tolle. Have you ever seen him speak? Look him up. <laughs> Eckhart Tolle takes about 10 minutes to say something that takes the rest of us 30 seconds to say. <laughs> this is an amazingly famous man, multimillionaire. Uh, last I looked up, he has well over $80 million and yet can't get words out. But what if any of you were to guess, what is what is the thing that ties all of these together? All these people. Christopher Walken. They are authentic. They are totally authentic. And they're very unique. And what makes them unique? They're being themselves. They're not yeah. trying. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. Being I think they're awesome. They also must have a passion for what they're doing because they're, it, it, that overcomes the fear, I would imagine, or any doubts that they might have. Yeah, and I think it comes to more than that because there are a lot of us that are really passionate about what we do and still get all caught up in our head about um, yeah, how to say the right thing and all of that. So there's there's more to it than that. I think that's a component of it. The more passion you have for your for your, for what it is that you're doing, yes, it's easier to overcome those things, but those blocks still happen even if you're super passionate especially for um, for anybody who in the past has gotten, you know, beat down for who you are, right? If there's something in your past, whether it's, you know, a past trauma, um, relationship issues, it could go all the way back to when you're a kid. I used to have a really, really difficult time being on video or even having conversations with people because every time I would speak reading a book with my mom, now, and I adore my mom, but at the time she was a horrible mom. She admits it. <laughs> and, she, and she would say, as I was reading, I had a very difficult time reading. And she'd say, spit it out. Just get it out. And so that just shut me down. I didn't want to get anything out. I just wanted to not be yelled at <laughs> and not be told 
that I need to spit things out. And so that shut me down. So things can go all the way back to your childhood, could have nothing to do with how passionate you are. There's just stories that are told in our heads. All right, let me get back to my notes. Got a little sidetracked there. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, yeah. And the other thing, yes, they're all authentic. They're all unique because they're being authentically themselves. They're also all millionaires because they stuck with it right? They stuck with, and they stuck with who they are. They didn't try to change who they are. They are themselves. If anything, they became more and more themselves over the years. Because what we do, and, and a lot of people do, and the reason why messaging is so difficult is because you sent out a false representation of yourself. Um, I had this idea one day and I was like, oh my gosh, you know what it's like? It's like we all put a mask on. <laughs> we all put a mask on. Sorry, I used this for something else. That's why the statements, statements up there. But, you know, we all put a mask on and then go out and try to do our marketing and then wonder why nobody's paying attention. Because it's like everybody else's. <laughs> it's just crazy. And we worry about how to be. I know when I first started doing video, I thought, well, gosh, let's look at all the people that are doing really well. Okay, Suzanne Evans, Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, oh, what was that crazy guy? He was, anyway, there was... All of these people that were doing well in video were loud and kind of in your face. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's how I have to be. And so, and that's how I was creating my videos. I was, you know, like all pumped up. <laughs> I don't know, Jan, Jan, do you remember? I don't know if you ever saw my videos from back then. I know I've known Jan, Jan since then. And it was all very, you know, I'm the buzz builder, nah, you know? It was all in your face and, and, and I did great, but here's the thing. It has changed so much. I could do that back then and get a lot of traction because there weren't very many people doing video. There weren't as many people online trying to get attention. It's different now, but you need to stop sending out a false representation of yourself. And, oh, and, and don't, don't, don't get me wrong here, Wendy. I'm actually in Wendy's mastermind. So I'm going to say something and then backtrack it a little bit. <laughs> so I'm going to say, stop AIing yourself. And what I mean by that is going into AI, looking for an answer for something, and then just using that and saying that that's who you are, because it's not. Everything has to, everything that comes out of, out of AI has to be massaged in some way because it's not you, even if you use, uh, um, and I'm not against, let me stop for a second. I am not anti-AI. I just want you to get that very clear. I'm not anti-AI. I think AI is a fabulous tool. The internet is a fabulous tool. Video is a fabulous tool. Not against the things. I'm just against the way some people are utilizing it. And because of the way some people are utilizing it, people who are coming out that really don't have expertise that are going into AI and, and creating programs and putting out programs. And that's why I think, I truly believe that what is going to happen is there's going to be a mass desire in people to have in-person meetings and to see you live, to prove that you are who you are, that you have the abilities that you have, that you say you have. And I don't think we're there yet. I think we're going to get there because people are going to want proof that you are who you say you are and can do the things that you say you can do. But in the meantime, let's get back to being yourself. So before you can be yourself and get yourself out there, one of the things that you need to ask yourself is, what story are you telling yourself about who you are? What's that story? I know for me, my story after so much had happened in my life, and it just life happened, right? Um, 2015, I got a divorce, and there's all kinds of things that happened. I don't want to go through the whole slew. But in the end of it, I told myself a story that I wasn't as powerful as I was before, that there were people in my past that would say something if I came out and I was just myself. The last time, and this is another story I told myself because I 
when I came out in 2016, I lost like 250 people and my, the people that were following me um, in my newsletter slashed in half. I mean, just disappeared. Oh, <laughs> such a... And so I carried that with me. I carried that wound with me and, and I, and I made it feel like a wound, but that was in my head. Those people were never my audience to begin with. They were the audience of my representative. They were not my audience. They weren't people connected to me. They were connected to a version of myself that was presenting to the world. What makes it, which makes it really difficult for people to really know who you are. And if you sell a service, people want to know who you are. They want to know that they can trust you. And then we get, with all this thing, we get caught up in our head. And one of the things that really hit me and helped me the most when I started trying to really figure out how do I change this and how do I, how can I be as authentic as I need to be? And I thought about my friends, people that I hang out with. And I started thinking about my clients' friends and who they hang out with. And I thought, well, when you're when you're with your friends, you're you, right? <laughs> I mean, you're probably the most authentic version of yourself when you're with your friends or you know your spouse. And they love you. <laughs> they love you without a script, without, without anything going on, without you coming in ahead of time and going, okay, what am I going to talk about when I go see my friend? Now, of course, there are times when I'm like, oh yeah, I can't wait to see so-and-so because I want to tell them this, or I want, I want to share this with them. But it comes from an authentic place. It's just there. I'm not trying to come up, well, okay, I'm going to go see... Nancy today I'm going to go out to Orlando and see Nancy what the hell am I going to tell her what the hell am I going to think about what are we going to talk about I don't plan the whole thing out I'm going to go see Nancy I'm going to go talk with her we're going to talk about what's what's important we're, we're going to talk about what's going on in my life at that moment what's going on in her life at that moment it's not it, what's what's interesting is if you truly get in touch with who you are and accepting who you are outside of just your friends, you'll find that you'll that you're going to locate people outside of your friendships, outside of your family, although you know, some families. Um, <laughs> but, you know, you're going to find, that people are going to resonate with you in ways that you never imagined. You know, once upon a time, I remember for those of us that came out of corporate America, and I know there's quite a few of us there that came out of corporate America, right? In corporate America, you're taught you have to be a certain way. You don't talk about politics. You don't talk about religion. You don't talk about X, Y, Z. And some of you still work with other corporations. And so you still have to be a little bit careful. But those of you that don't, um, those of you that don't, oh my gosh, there is nothing impeding you from being exactly who you are and then attracting people to you because of who you are. We see this over and over again. Look at, oh, here's, I have an example of a company that did this, that did talk about, um, that does talk about subjects that would otherwise be called taboo uh, which is pensies is anybody familiar with pensies so pensies it's p-e-n-z-y pensies is a spice company and they got started several years ago and they started talking about in their emails and in their videos and everything they did they took a stand and they said we support the lgbt community we support Black Lives Matter. And they didn't care who they pissed off in saying it. They did not care. And they actually took a portion of their proceeds to support certain political parties. That company blew up. Now, did they get a lot of hate? 
Oh yeah. They absolutely did. But the people that mattered to them, the people that they were truly trying to serve, they heard them and they came and supported them. Now they, they made a decision as a company, that's what they were going to do. I'm not saying you need to do that. I'm just saying, be you. You have to determine what you're comfortable, what you're comfortable with sharing. But I'm telling you, the more you share about who exactly who you are, the more successful you're going to be. Um, and I just I just want to reiterate the beautiful thing about about video. And I don't think I talked about this before. I think this was actually a uh, a post that I did years ago. And Jan, you may have heard this before. Um, when I was working with Dancing Elephant with uh, Tim Moore. And one of the things we talk about is, uh, this was a study done by Harvard. And it talked about the import of communication using words, tone, and body language. And the question was, you know, what is the most important in communication, in communicating um, meaning? And uh, does anybody know what the uh, what the most important is, or do you have a guess at what the most important? And you may know about this study. You can unmute or or put it in the chat. It's not going to be the words. It's probably the tone, body language. I think. So words. They found out that words are seven percent. That if you just take words that communication can be misunderstood 93% of the time because you lose so much uh, without the tone and without the body language. So that's, you know, so for a blog post or a message on Facebook, um, if it's just 7% of just the words because what's happening is each person is reading it from their own mindset. So they're reading what you write from their own mindset and what how they want to interpret your words. So you're putting all of the onus on them to interpret. Tone of voice is 35%. 35, no, sorry, 38%. Yeah, 38%. So tone of voice is 38%. So you can change the words, the meaning of the words with tone. And you can demonstrate this really easily, right? I love Brussels sprouts. I love Brussels sprouts. <laughs> I love Brussels sprouts, right? Three completely different meanings, all the same words. You put body language into it and it changes everything altogether. I could use the same words, same tone, change my body language and completely change the meaning of something. And that's gonna confuse my head, so I don't know if I can do it, but let's try. <laughs> so, I love <coughs> Brussels sprouts. Obviously I don't, <laughs> I do, but from the body language, it completely gets rid of whatever I say. In video, the beautiful thing about video is you get words, tone, and body language. So you get all the components in order to make sure that your message gets conveyed clearly in the way that you want it to. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's I just thought that was just a really cool explanation about why it's so important um, and how helpful it is. Deidre? Yes. How much can you do body language when you're in a 16 by nine frame and you're being viewed from here up? You so you have arms and legs to use. True, but you just saw me express body language with my face. That yeah, she, just your face, yeah. Yeah, so you can do so much just here. You know, whether it's hands or your shoulders, your face, your expressions, there's so much that happens in 
in being visible on video. Um, I know that one of the things, oh, sorry, my brain just went, it's over there somewhere. <laughs> so I'm going to go back to my notes. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's, go ahead. Squirrel. Oh yeah, squirrel. But yeah, so it's, and here's the, here's something I wasn't planning on talking about this today, but here's the other thing is that being on video will accentuate things about your personality. So I used to tell people, and Jan, I don't know if you ever heard any of my, my presentations back then, back in 2008, 2009, but one of the things I used to tell people is, um, you know, if you're, everything on video just accentuates whatever it is that whoever you are. So if you're an asshole, <laughs> video is not going to help you. You're better off just using words um, because it will let you know you can you can be in a live with somebody or a workshop or um, any kind of Zoom call, and you can tell if somebody is sincere. You can tell if somebody knows what they're talking about, and not because of the things that they're saying, but because it gets expressed. You can feel it. You can see it. It is crazy how much it increases that. And that's why you can be on on some sessions with people and you you just get this immediate bad feeling or you're like, oh, I'm, I, I just can't. Your intuition is telling you there's something wrong. There's something wrong going on there. So it's really important. One of the things that we're going to talk about on the third and the third session is about how to prepare yourself for being on video because you have to be the best you when you're when you're on but just like when you're seeing when you're with a friend right unless you have issues that you want to deal with you're usually in a pretty good mood when you're with your friend or or it's sincerity um but you usually aren't going into your friend with you know all of the all of the issues that you have with your day um There's, there's, there's just more of, uh, you know, building relationships with people and video is so incredibly helpful for that. Um, and on the third day, we're also going to talk about the different lengths of videos because there are different lengths of videos and different ways to do video. And there are also ways if you're really, really um, concerned about showing up on video live, even though that's what the teleprompter is all about. One of the things you can do is what I call um, connector videos, which are impromptu videos that you record and then you can put them up later, but they're incredible connectors that allow you to have the feel of live without being live. So that, that we'll talk about on the third day as well. For today, in order to help you out, I and I got this idea from Kate, so I appreciate it, Kate. I think she's still here. Um, I started a private community on Facebook called The Grove. And the reason I started that is here's, this will be a place where I can put any um, downloads for you and um, any items from the workshop. Also the replays, I'm going to put them over there as well. But I also have your email, so I'll email you a link to it. But if you could go to the Grove and so let me get here. <laughs> I lost my link. Hold on just a second. And let me get this. And I haven't invited anybody into this yet. So hopefully this works. Let's go up to everyone in the meeting. Okay. So this is called The Grove. And the gro and I want to tell you why I came up with this name. Um, this is kind of an odd little name. I was reading the, um, the Big Five. Is anybody familiar with The Big Five? It's a great book if you haven't read it. A uh, Big Five of Life. The Big Five of Life. 
And one of the things they were talking about is um, growing papaya trees. <laughs> it's a business book, but it's talking about papaya trees and how if you if you're growing papaya trees, right, and you put it, you put a hundred seeds in a bucket. Link isn't working. Awesome. Okay. I'll fix it later. <laughs> so, um, so you put a hundred, you put a hundred papaya seeds into a bucket, water them, take nice care of them, and they start growing. And as they grow, of course, some grow faster than others, and they start shading the smaller ones and the smaller ones aren't growing as fast. And if you leave them at that time, only the ones that compete and get out in front of the, the smaller ones live and all the rest of them die. But if you take out the large ones, and let's say you take 10 of them out and you put them in a pot. And so you have 10 pots of 10, right? And then as they grow, they will grow up to eventually about a foot in height. And at that point, you take them out and you plant them. Now, if you plant a papaya tree all by itself, it'll grow. It'll grow really tall and really strong, and it may bear fruit. But if you take them out and you space the papaya trees enough far apart that they are not competing for resources, but close enough that they share resources, like rain dropping off the leaves and, and helping the other, and they can... Um, What's it called? Bees do it. What's it called? What's it called? Pollinate. And they, they uh, pollinate. pollinate. They poll thank you. They pollinate each other. Right. And so I thought, what a beautiful metaphor for a community. Right. A, a community where we can all come together and share resources with each other and help one another. So if that's interesting to you, I'd love to invite you to the Grove, which isn't working. So I will send that link out to you individually. Um, but that will help you. And then you can also put your questions on there. So if there's something from here today and you're thinking, well, I just really have another question about this, please put that on there. Um, another thing also is if you... Let's see, let me get the, I can get the, I can invite you to it this afternoon and then go ahead and go into the group. And if you'll leave a video with your, you know, tell us your name, what's your business and what your biggest takeaway is from today. The reason is nobody in there is going to attack you because of your video. Nobody's going to be, nobody's going to tear you up. In fact, I'm going to ask each of you that participates in this to make positive comment or um, you know positive comment on somebody else's video letting them know you know what you learned about them or something that relates to them and let's help each other to be more visible first inside the group and then to be able to be more visible outside of the group each person that participates in any homework assignment that we offer, that I offer over the next three days, will be entered into a giveaway. What am I giving away? I don't know yet. I'll give away something. <laughs> I just had the idea. I just had the idea about 10 minutes before I started. I was like, oh, I'm giving homework. Maybe I'll give a prize. Yeah. I don't know what it is. But <laughs> again, I'll invite you so that we can get in. Um. So today we talked about being you, why you don't need to be anyone else, why you don't want to send a representative out when you market, the you that you share with your friends, the you that you share with your spouse, the you that you share with your most significant people, that's the you that you need to be marketing. That way you are going to find people that connect with you and who you are, and you're gonna be more comfortable being yourself as well. It's a beautiful kind of give back thing where people are attracted to you because of you, you are, you'll feel more comfortable being yourself and it just builds. It may not have, you may not have a bazillion followers, but you'll have followers that actually care about what it is that you're doing, what it is that you have to offer, and they want to be there with you because you're helping them. And it just goes to serve um, a nice synergy together. 
So we're going to get back tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to be talking about instead of be you, we're going to talk about being bold. So some actual things that you can do to make difference, make a difference in your marketing, in who you are. The third day, we're actually going to talk about the teleprompter and how to utilize that and how you can utilize a teleprompter and still look like you're not utilizing a teleprompter. But a lot of that, the reason I don't jump into that from the get-go is because this foundational work has to be in place. If I just, if, if we don't put this foundational stuff in place and I just tell you how to use a teleprompter um, and how to utilize it, it's not going to come across as you and you're going to stumble and the marketing won't be as powerful. So that's why, um, sorry, my phone just rang. I apologize about that. That's why that is uh, so important to talk about the be bold and the be you first before we get into the be known and how you get known and with the messaging that you utilize. So I thank you so much for today. Does anybody have any questions here at the end before we end up going into tomorrow? No questions. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to invite, yes, Jody. Yeah. It's not really a question. I'm, I'm hoping it's a hope, a hopeful yeah. statement Please. that we could talk a little bit about um, the intention behind the video and how the intention of the video sort of influences its impact positively or negatively yes. to the viewer. Okay. Yeah, we'll absolutely talk about that. Great. Okay. Anybody else have something that they definitely want to make sure that I cover? Pam? Yes. I cannot unmute. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Thank you. I wanted to share um, something, if that's okay. Please. Probably be a question at the end. So, um, with with showing up, you know, visibility and being on video, I have a problem, which is um, I have a chronic disease that makes me very inconsistent. All right. So sometimes like I'm thinking it's a part of who I am in a way. Do I talk about it? Do I leave it out because here, you know, consistent for a week and then I'm away for two weeks and then I'm back like, hey, nothing happened. <laughs> so it has been, you know, it's like, okay, do I share that part of it? Is it, you know, a part of my messaging or do I just, how do I make up for that? That That's the question that I want to ask. Yeah. It's a great question. Um, that is, that is. I do that without the chronic disease. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's certainly up to you. Um, to me, I think that sharing something like that allows people to connect with you and to understand why there isn't the consistency there. And they're typically if, you know, it's like you would tell if, if you would tell your friend. Right. So. Uh, but again, you have to be comfortable with it because whatever it is that you say and and I realize what I'm asking you here, guys, because I realize that when you are yourself, yes, you're going to attract the people that are that are meant to be with you. But it also means you are going to open yourself up to criticism. And that's one of the things we're going to talk about tomorrow is how you handle that. How do you handle putting yourself out there and potentially opening yourself, not potentially, you are opening <coughs> yourself up to criticism, just, just how the world operates right now. And uh, sadly, um, but it is true. And so we are going to talk about some resiliency methods in order to help protect yourself and to prepare yourself for those moments. And then what you do when those moments happen. Um, but as far as whether you should or shouldn't, I can't make that determination for you. I can tell you that when you do that, oh, and Nancy's making a really good thought as well. She was saying you could also record some ahead of time and then you can post them when you, uh, in order to maintain consistency. And that's true. If you're doing lives and you don't want to have them recorded ahead of time, though, you can just let people know. And then you don't, and then they're very accepting 
you know, oh, I had this, this happened last week, but here I am. And then you just get, and then you just go on with it. And people who know are going to be like, oh yeah, because they're your friend. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> they're going to accept it. And in fact, some people may even come closer to you because, oh, wow, I don't have that, but I have this. And I admire you so much for doing X, Y, Z. And it just, it endears you to people, but you have to be ready and be okay with that. I know that's not a great answer, but that is, that is the only answer I have for you. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I'm the times that I have opened up and shared like parts of my story, I have had really great feedback. Wow, Pam, you know, it's amazing. You are such a strong person. And that was the part of me that I was afraid of sharing because of my fear, you know, of having how people see me or, you know, things like that. It's like other people's opinion. But the times that I have opened up, you know, it's like, wow, this is some, I mean, your story is amazing. So uh, I think I have to get comfortable in sharing it because I think it's a part of me that will empower not just me, but other people as well. Yeah, you can also do it as a one-off post and say, you know, I'm going to share something that I normally don't share and here's why, you know, and you, and you can share it. So there's so many different ways to do it. And uh, and Jacqueline, I think, is makes a really good point. You know, it definitely creates better understanding. And yeah, and, and the details and how much you share is up to you. One of the oh. things that I like to say is that, you know, if, if if you're sharing something, you only need to share as much as you feel comfortable with first. And um, as far as, you know, how much you talk about it, um, I like to think of how much do I talk about this that will also help does it help to explain something in business or can I utilize this in a way to explain something in business or um, we're going to talk about this more tomorrow because we're going to get into some messaging tomorrow, but you can take something like that and, and, you know, and how it affects your business or how, how, what it's taught you about business that you can teach somebody else. So there's so many ways that you can utilize it without just telling, here's this thing I struggle with. Right. Does that make sense? So that it's not, yes. only, yeah, like Nancy said, what do you want them left with? And so it's mm -hmm. not just telling your story, but hey, can this help somebody in some way? How can I turn this into something where I'm sharing, but I'm also helping? And it's another way of taking that and having an impact rather than it being something that I don't know if I should share or not, but using it to make an impact. Right. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Yeah, you're quite welcome. Anybody I just else? had a yeah. I just had a moment. So I, ha I have to interject here. So Please. one of my friends said to me, Jan, when you're cooking in your kitchen, your kitchen always looks so clean. And my kitchen normally is I teach food safety, it has to be perfect. However, she said, we never get to see your mess. And I, she said, that makes me uncomfortable. I think you should just let everybody see your mess. And what you just said, I just wanted to say thank you because it made me think of that and it made me think of, well, when I'm sharing the mess, it'd be a good, um, maybe good tip to show how to clean something better or faster or easier while I'm cleaning up the mess, you know? So I'm going to find a way. It does make it a little bit more human and it shows that, you know, oh, I'm not perfect when I'm cooking, so it's not as intimidating. So just as a thought, I wanted to thank you for that. That's yeah. perfect. I learned that too. When because if we because I used to be like, oh, it, it always has to look perfect, and you know I have to look a certain way. But the more I tried to do that and not show up authentically as myself, then looked a little too perfect. It's like you know Pleasantville. You know the more. <laughs> The, the more real I got, then the more relatable. And, you know, it's, yeah, it's easier to connect with like, oh, she's not perfect. She might understand me because I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. Oh, she'll get me. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. You know, I, I, I told you about, um, let's say back in 2016 coming out and 
what's interesting, I told you about the people that left, right? I mean, I immediately people um, like disengaged with me from Facebook, unfriended me, um, lost all kinds of people in my newsletter. What I didn't mention, because that, that was the trauma and I held on to that for so long. I've always felt like this in your marketing and it's led to me not trusting you. I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea. And so by letting people in and sharing something deeply personal to myself, which was the first time, and I think it just shocked the hell out of people. I was being, you know, being so open about something. And that, while it pushed people away, it connected me to people that I just didn't realize how much putting up a mask and sending out a representation of myself was damaging my relationship with people because they didn't know me. They felt they had no idea who I was and couldn't connect with me on a human level. Oh, wow. So as much as we think we have to be a certain way, we don't. You need to be you. You need to be you. So that is today. Today was all about be you. Tomorrow we're going to be about be bold. I um, look forward to having you back. I will send out um, either through Facebook or through an email, a link to the Grove, or maybe I'll just send it out from the Grove itself. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in there as well. So thank you so much. Hope this thank was you. beneficial to you. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you. All right. Take thank care. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Deidre. Thank you. Deidre, I can totally relate. I used to be like that in my personal life because I had it that men leave. So I always had to do that pretty face and try to show up the way they were expecting me to show up. And I'm like, I'm not going to let my, I'm not going to open up my heart and be vulnerable until you prove to me that you're going to stick around. But because I didn't do that, they didn't get to know the real me. And then they left. It's and a self-fulfilling right prophecy. Isn't that crazy? It's a self-fulfilling it? prophecy. Yeah. And as soon as I recognized that, then I was like, oh, okay, I'm just going to show up as me. And then I relationships. Imagine that. <laughs> That's funny. I I actually have a different issue around all of that. I always think, well, who wants to know that? Who's interested in that? It's more like nobody wants to hear that. So it's a different side of it, but it's the same thing. It's like, I'm not going to tell people that or who, you know, but I really think it's powerful when you said they didn't trust you because you weren't being authentic. So like, oh my God, that's of course. Yeah. But, you know, so I, it was really difficult to get people into higher level programs because they felt yeah. they didn't know who I was. Yeah. And how can yeah, I that's... work with you on things deeply personal if I don't know anything about you? Right. That was, that's really powerful. I'm really glad you shared that because that, that's like, choom. yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was huge for me. I'm, I'm glad that helped. Yeah, I really did. Thank you so much. Yeah. This was awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. You guys take care. We'll see you tomorrow. All right. Sounds good. Bye.